All right. Hello, everyone, and uh, good morning. Good morning. I was uh, I was up early this morning. Sometimes you're you're in bed and you're even on the weekends. You're thinking about things you need to do on Saturday. And I had a couple, well, quite a few things to do today before the football game comes on. Uh, Michigan is playing Nebraska today, so I think I'm going to go watch the game at a sports bar with other Michigan fans. But uh, I was up early, and I decided to get an early start on things and try to make sure I knocked everything out. So I hoped to start at quarter to nine. I made a little more progress this morning, but I am still starting a little bit later. Let me make sure I could see myself on YouTube. And thank you to everyone to the individuals who smashed the like button before this stream started. I really, really appreciate that. Let's see. Yep, there is my red icon. Uh, so I am live. Please smash that like button if you come in. Also, Shout yourselves out. Let me know who is here. Okay, I'm going to share this over on my original channel, and then I'm going to jump in. I have a bunch of information to share, uh, but I'm going to try to do this in the most uh, expeditious way, as uh, Joe Clark said in um, Lean On Me. Doug. How you doing? Thank you for stopping through. Doug, I think you started this whole uh, endocrinology train here. So appreciate that. Appreciate you stopping through. And I appreciate all the support. Please smash the like button uh, uh, if you haven't. Looks like you did. All right. Uh, let's see. So I'm over here. Big Discussion 76. My original channel. My plan is to go for less than an hour. It always ends up being a little bit more. But um, things and always end up going a little bit longer. Things don't always go according to plan, and I think that's that's just a reality of life. Okay, so this has been shared over there. Oh, I got another like. Thank you for liking that. Whoever did. I'm going to go back to my channel so I can watch all of the metadata uh, in real time. All right. So this is going to be an interesting um, discussion. And there's a little bit of risk <laughs> in me talking about this. So I think I think that I will need to be as measured and as diplomatic as possible. Uh, and this will probably lead to other streams and uh, discussions. So I wanna ask everyone, whoever tunes in to watch this, please uh, share this content out. Uh, this, yeah, this, as I'll describe in this offering, what we're looking at right now and what we're living through right now. Oh, Toya, Toya's here. Thank you for stopping through, Toya. Good to see you. What we're living through right now is we're seeing a lot of merging and intermingling of things. So we're seeing science merge with culture and politics and in some instances, religion, in some instances, gender. Uh, and and, and it's, uh, it's not quite clear what we're looking at. It's not quite clear if science is what science was. That And that goes for the research. It goes for things that we understood to be true. In this instance, what a man and a woman is. So we're seeing the intersection and the, and the, and the mingling of a lot of things some people think it's for good. Others think, well, maybe this is taking us in the wrong direction. So that's kind of what we're going to talk about. So please share this content out. I'm looking to grow. I'm looking to grow as a science influencer. 
So uh, the amount of shares that this gets helps out a lot. So I will uh, play my short intro and then I will jump into what we're going to discuss today. A lot of news out of uh, Dallas uh, Toya with the, 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 um, the representative giving that speech defending uh, the president yesterday. Anyway, where is my... There it is. Um, so, Anwar, I see you have the periodic tables on your chest. Mm -hmm. So what's that all about? Why are you walking around with a chemistry chart on your chest? Well, oh, yeah. Cheryl, <laughs> so this channel is a, it's a STEM channel. So when I was conceiving of it and, and figuring out how to grow it, mm -hmm. I, I figured I, I should have some some T-shirts to go with it. So. Okay. The periodic table is is, is critical is to okay. most of the scientific fields. Welcome to Big Discussions 76, Science and Technology. Science and technology are all around us all of the time. And there are always science and technology stories to tell. There are always science and technology stories. And actually it was, I just described, science today is becoming commingled with everything, uh, culture, politics, um, uh, gender discussions. So with that, in addition to just the science itself, the creation of new technologies, the creation of new methods, we're seeing this intermingling of things for better or for worse. And that's where this stream came from. Actually, I thought about this, the, the idea of, um, and for the YouTube algorithm, this is for educational purposes and discussion only. Uh, I, I'm not looking to attack a group. I'm not looking to disparage a group. We're just talking about what's going on and we're talking science. So I thought about the, the aspect of um, transitioned men competing in women's sports a while ago. I wasn't sure how to talk about it. I wasn't sure how to approach it. But as is often the case, when I opened up my Microsoft Edge browser, there was a nice article about uh, Martina Navratilova uh, and her choice words and opinions for Dr. Neil deGrasse Tyson's positions on this whole thing. And that that's the basis for the stream. And I'm, and that's, I'm sorry. That's the basis for the stream. And I'm going to get to that in the middle of the stream. So with that, we're going to have two individuals uh, weigh in here and uh, set the tone and set the stage for this discussion. So those two individuals are Senator Marsha Blackburn and Justice Katanji Brown Jackson. And these two had a historic dialogue at uh, Justice Jackson's uh, Supreme Court, um, her hearing for, for, her, for her bid for a position on the Supreme Court. So I'll start with Senator Marsha Blackburn. Can you provide a definition for the word woman? Sounds like a simple question, right? Well, let's get that again. Can you provide a definition for the word woman? What did uh, Justice Jackson say in response? Her, her response was classic itself. Can I provide a definition? Mm -hmm. no. Yeah. I can't. You can't? Mm, not in okay. this context. So I'm not a biologist. The I cannot provide a definition for what a woman is. Not in this context. I am not a biologist. Let's hear that one more time. Can I provide a definition? Mm -hmm. no. Yeah. I can't. You can't? Mm, not in okay. this context. So I'm not a biologist. The 
So that was a, a, a classic and um, fascinating Q&A whenever someone's going for one of those uh, Supreme Court justice seats, the other party is typically trying to trip the person up and give them a hard time. But this one was particularly interesting because the question is, well, we we all know what a woman is, right? We all know what a man is, right? Why, Miss Brown Jackson, why can't you say what exactly a man or a woman is? But in this instance, what a woman is. And a lot of people were... Uh, frustrated and 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 they felt like like um, she was being greatly disrespected by that question. But I think it gets to. I mean, clearly she knows what a woman is, uh, but I think it gets to where we are now in society, in terms of how we see the world, how we see science, and how everything is getting intermingled and. And kind of twisted and turned uh, to <clears throat> capitulate to certain groups and cater to certain groups, and um, yeah, so that that's what that was all about. But, but n- n- note that at the end of that, to Miss uh, Brown Jackson's credit, she did admit, "I am not a biologist." Can I provide a definition? Mm-hmm. No. Yeah. I can't. You can't? Mm, not in okay. this context. So I'm not a biologist. Of the- and that's cool. Justice Jackson, that's why I'm here, because I am a biologist. So we need people in society who can answer these questions about what a man and what a woman is. So again, YouTube, this is for educational purposes only this is just for uh discussion no disparaging of anybody here you know we're not involved in hate speech or anything we're just talking about the science speaking of which this is a good time for this quote by one of my heroes dr willie soon what but what happened when you do bad science this is part of the stuff that i have passion about you know when you mess around with science you mess around with me right mess around with science you mess around with me all right so we'll do justice jackson is not a biologist i am so we're going to do a quick review and then we're going to go on down the line to uh hormone uh replacement uh therapies we're going to end with that in a brief way please smash that like button if you haven't the likes are free and they certainly help with the engagement okay so we're going to do a quick run through everyone of biology 101. I'm going to try to make this as painless as possible. So you all know that we all have, our bodies are made up of uh, animal cells. And of course I don't have my animal cell queued up. Please smash that like button if you haven't. The likes are free and they help out with the engagement. Where's my animal cell? Where is it? Where is it? Where is it? Where are our animal cells? There it is. All right. We as humans, we're part of the animal kingdom. So our bodies are made up of billions and billions of these animal cells. Okay. Each in different in, in different tissues and in different organs, right? Uh, the nucleus, that's where all of our genetic material is um, housed, okay? We're gonna do some molecular biology today. Molecular biology means you're dealing with DNA. Justice Jackson is not a biologist, I am. That's why I'm here. All right, so in the nucleus, for most of our cells, there are 46 chromosomes. You get 23 from your mother, you get 23 from your father, right? Okay, those are your somatic cells. I think that's the right term, somatic cells. But there are also our uh, our gametes so as men grow and mature into men and women grow and mature into women or should i say as boys grow and mature into men and women and girls grow and mature into women each gender develops their specific sex cell uh, organs right men generate sperm women generate eggs all right 
those sperm and those eggs are generated by the process of meiosis. That means the cells uh, start at 46 chromosomes and then they eventually divide and differentiate down so that there are 26 chromosomes. I'm sorry, 23 chromosomes. Let me get my math right. So the cells go from 46 to 23, right? So then sperm and egg join together, whether planned or not. And when sperm and egg join together, the number 46 is restored. You have an embryo that starts to differentiate into a zygote, right? It starts to go through its development. It attaches to the the, the wall of the, uh, the the uterus, the placenta forms. And after nine months, you have a, a, a formed uh, baby in there. What I wanted to get you to see is that it's all genetic. It's, it starts with, with uh, 46 chromosomes. You go down to 23, and then those get restored to 46. That number gets restored to 46 when sperm and egg uh, join uh, together. Where was I going to go from there? Oh, right. So where does the Y chromosome? So, so, so what is, this gets back to what is a woman? This is going to, these two ladies are going to be our, our guiding lights throughout this talk. This is going to be one of the key questions for this talk. Can you provide a definition for the word woman? What is it, Justice Jackson? What is it? Can I provide a definition? Mm -hmm. no. Yeah. I can't. You can't? N not in okay. this context. So I'm not a biologist. The the okay, so phenotype aside. Phenotype aside, because in some instances, I'm going to get myself in trouble for saying this, but I think in some instances today, we can't tell with makeup and, and, and all kinds of things and surgeries on, on the outside, looking at the outside of a person, their appearance, you can't really tell in some instances what's a woman in the classic sense and uh, what isn't. Uh, another politician, a representative, Corey Bush from, is it Kansas or is it Missouri? I think she's from Missouri. I heard she, she allegedly gave us the term birthing people. Okay. Uh, Mark, Mark Lamont Hill, he, he, he's on record uh, as saying that men can have babies too. So, so what is it? So, and, and shout out to Matt Walsh. He, he did create a documentary on this. What is a woman? Uh, that was, that was very, very controversial. Uh, but from a biological standpoint, as a biologist, as a pharmacologist, I'm going to go back to molecular biology. To me, this involves the DNA, regardless of what you look like on the outside. What is the identity of your DNA? So we know that women have two X chromosomes right? And men have an X, Y, an X and Y chromosome. So from a molecular biology standpoint, that designates what a man and a woman are. Now, the question is, and where this gets a little bit blurry, is what about how, how you feel? Does how you feel impact which side of the line you're on? And that's the kind of that's kind of the nebula uh, we're in right now. OK, so let's talk about the, the Y chromosome, because the Y chromosome is what makes a man a man from a molecular biological standpoint. Uh, and also uh, that that chromosome dictates a man's growth and uh, maturity into that gender. So look, so what is the Y chromosome? We're going to we're going to learn some things here on this channel. We're always learning things. Please continue uh, letting me know what you think there in the in the chat. YouTube, this is for 
educational purposes only. I'm going to try to sprint through this. All right. The Y chromosome. Actually, no, I don't want to do the infographic yet. The Y chromosome. This is off of Medline. The link to this is in the description box below for your own records. The Y chromosome. The Y chromosome is one of the two sex chromosomes in humans. The other is the X chromosome. The sex chromosomes form one of the 23 pairs of human chromosomes in each cell. The Y chromosome spans more than 59 million building blocks of DNA base pairs and represents almost 2% of the total DNA in cells. Each person normally has one pair of sex chromosomes in each cell. The Y chromosome is present in males who have one X and one Y chromosome, while females have two X chromosomes. Identifying genes on each chromosome is an, is an active area of genetic research because researchers use different approaches to predict the number of genes on each chromosome. The estimated number of genes varies. The Y chromosome likely contains 70 to 200 genes that provide instructions for making proteins because only males because only males have the y chromosome the genes on this chromosome tend to be involved in male sex determination and development sex is determined by the sry gene which is responsible for the development of a fetus into a male other genes on the Y chromosome are important for enabling men to father biological children, parentheses, male fertility. Many genes are unique to the Y chromosome, but genes in areas known as uh, pseudo autosomal regions are present on both sex chromosomes. As a result, men and women each have two functional copies of these genes. Many genes in the pseudo autosomal regions are essential for normal development. All right, so that's the Y chromosome. So let's move on. So what does the Y chromosome do? Going back to molecular biology 101. Justice Jackson said she's not a biologist. I am a biologist. So your DNA, what your DNA does is it possesses the template for your proteins. Your proteins are the workhorses of our cells and of our bodies. So what's so important about this SYR gene? Let's find out. This is also from Medline. The SYR gene, normal function. The SYR gene the SYR gene provides instructions for making a protein called the sex determining region Y protein. The protein is involved in, in male typical sex development, which usually follows a certain pattern based on an in, in individual's chromosomes. People usually have 46 chromosomes in each cell. Two of the 46 chromosomes known as X and Y are called sex chromosomes because they help determine whether a person will develop male or female sex characteristics. Girls and women typically have uh, two X chromosomes, while boys and men typically have one X chromosome and one Y chromosome. The SYR gene is found on the Y chromosome. The sex determining region Y uh, protein produced from this uh, gene acts as a, transcript as a transcription factor, which means it attaches or binds to specific regions of DNA and helps control the activity of particular genes. This protein starts processes that cause a fetus to develop male gonads or testes and prevent the development of female reproductive structures, uh, also known as, well, parentheses, the uterus and fallopian tubes. So what does that mean? So that means that that SYR gene gives rise to something called a transcription factor, which is another word for a protein. That protein binds specific regions of DNA and binding of those regions basically uh, initiate pathways 
that cause uh, male uh, growth and development from the, the fetal stage. So that's why that SRY gene is so critical. And that's how, in a basic sense, that SRY gene dictates who becomes male and who does not. All right. So now that that's out of the way, I'm going to have an infographic here. I'm going to go over this really, really quickly. I'm going to try to sprint through. This is just more um, background information on this for us biologists here. The Y chromosome. And this is important because today, remember today, what's, you know, what's true and what isn't, what, what, you know, how, how, how do you differentiate genders today? What is a man? What is a woman? Uh, should there be different arenas for the two? Are they the same? Are they different? Okay. That's why this is important. So this is an infographic. This link is below in the description box. And this reads as follows. Among the 24 chromosomes that make up uh, the human genome, the Y chromosome is unique for its highly repetitive structure. Scientists are studying the Y and its unusual features to better understand human health and disease. So 11 neat facts about the Y chromosome. In the nucleus of a human cell, each DNA molecule is packaged into a long thread-like structure called a chromosome. Most human cells contain 23 pairs of chromosomes. One half of each pair of chromosomes comes uh, from one parent, while the other half comes from the other parent. The 23rd pair are X and Y chromosomes, often called sex chromosomes. The other 23 pairs are called autosomes, all right? That's number one. Two, <clears throat> this is what I was just talking about. Let me blow this up. In fertilization, sperm can contribute either an X or a Y chromosome, while eggs always contribute an X chromosome. So the significance of that is that uh, I think in, in medieval times, it was believed that uh, the king, the queen, made the determination as to whether or not the king would have sons. But what we know in science is, and what's understood now, is that it's actually the man who determines uh, the gender of his children. I don't think we're at a point where that can be controlled but it's the man who actually determines the gender of the child from a biological and uh, natural standpoint. All right, the X and the Y chromosome are central for the process of sexual development, but other genes throughout the genome play a role. This complex gives rise to uh, the array of human sex characteristics found among male, female, and intersex individuals. The Y chromosome is most commonly associated with male individuals, but the Y chromosome does not singularly define a person's sex. The Y chromosome is one third as long as the X chromosome. And while the X chromosome has about 900 protein coding genes, the Y chromosome has just around 100 coding genes. That's the fewest gene of any chromosome. The Y chromosome, this is point number five, the Y chromosome is frequently used in genealogy. Typically, the Y chromosome is only passed down from male parent to male offspring. So the information on the Y chromosome can more specifically illustrate ancestry of one direct lineage to male ancestors. Again, this link is in the description box below. All individuals who have a Y chromosome are related through a single Y-bearing ancestor who likely lived around 300,000 years ago. All right. We just talked about this. One of the genes on the Y chromosome is the SRY gene. The protein produced by this gene turns on a set of other genes that cause the embryo 
to develop certain sex characteristics, such as testes. If the SRY gene doesn't produce a functional protein, the embryo will not develop testes, despite having a Y chromosome. Okay. Variation in the number of sex chromosomes in a cell is not uncommon. Some people have more than two sex chromosomes in all of their cells, such as individuals with a double XY, X, double Y, or triple X chromosomes. Some individuals have a single sex chromosome, X or a, a OX, or one of these chromosomes may be incomplete. Also, many people born with a Y chromosome can also lose the Y chromosome from their cells as they age. Smoking may exacerbate this loss. All right, we're almost done here. Some genes, this is point number nine, some genes that were thought to be lost from uh, the Y chromosome have actually relocated to other chromosomes. Point 10 says about 66% of the chromosome, I'm sorry, about 66% of the Y chromosome is composed of repetitive DNA, which is particularly difficult for researchers to study. Specialized DNA sequencing and, and analysis techniques are needed to determine the arrangement of these highly similar segments. And then finally, many health conditions are thought to be related to changes in genes on the Y chromosome. This is currently an active area of research. This infographic is in the description box below in case you want to keep a copy for yourself. It looks like some people are still there. The last time I read an infographic on this channel, YouTube took that stream down and temporarily <laughs> banned my channel. Thank you to YouTube for putting my channel back and restoring it. All right. So what does this... Why does this matter? What does this have to do uh, with, with anything, um, especially today? What, what, why does this matter? A Y chromosome, uh, an SRY gene, differentiating, differentiating between males and females, men and women, girls and boys. What does this all matter? Well, I'm going to bring us back to our, uh, our two guides for the stream, Senator uh, Marsha Blackburn and uh, Justice Katanji Brown Jackson. Can you provide a definition for the word woman? And Justice Brown Jackson's answer was? Can I provide a definition? Mm -hmm. no. Yeah. I can't. You can't? N not in okay. this context. So I'm not a biologist. She's not a biologist because she's not a biologist because not everyone can be a biologist. That's why people like me are here. Uh, Robert, uh, I'm sorry, Hubert, Hubert Rang says, good morning, uh, peace and many blessings to you in the chat. Thank you for stopping through, uh, Hubert. Please smash that like button if you haven't. So what does this all matter? Why, why do we care? Why should we care about any of this? Because in society, things are coming to a head and a lot of things are, are kind of colliding now as, as things that we understood to be true years ago are getting blurred and done away with altogether. We're seeing all kinds of um, collapses and all kinds of... Um, quagmires and issues that we didn't see before, such as who should compete in women's sports and also should women compete in men's sports, okay? Does anyone out there, does anyone out there know who Martina Navratilova is? I think this is, this is a good time for a Q and A because we're, we're, kind of crossing from science over into culture and into other arenas. Does, does anybody know who Martina Navra Tolova is? Anybody, any takers? Martina Navra Tolova. Okay. 
One more time. Martina Navratilova. I'll give you a hint. I'll give you a hint. Venus and Serena. Naomi Osaka. Sloan Stevens. What sport do they play? What sport do they compete in? Anybody? Venus and Serena. Naomi Osaka. Sloan Stevens. Uh, there's another another uh, very competitive uh, black young black woman competing in in this sport right now. Okay, no takers. See, Aquateki would know this. <laughs> tennis, everyone. Tennis. Martina Navratilova was a highly accomplished tennis player uh, in the 80s. In the 80s. She was in her prime in the 80s. But what else is unique about or interesting about Martina Navratilova? She's, well, she's lesbian. She's a lesbian. So one of the things that we've been seeing socially and culturally is, well... Okay, I should probably be careful talking about this now. Uh, the El Gibbet. I think some of the other, other channels are referring to the El Gibbet. So all of those groups have been lumped together. But the question is, do they all want to be lumped together? All right. Well, I saw this article on Martina Navratilova. And it relates to something Dr. Neil deGrasse Tyson said a couple of months ago. Does everybody know out there who Dr. Neil deGrasse Tyson is? Okay. And I created a short on this. Either way, Martina Navratilova had some choice words for Dr. Neil deGrasse Tyson about his position on um transitioned males competing in female sports all right this is a short piece completely clueless while trying to sound knowledgeable martina navratilova reacts to neil degrasse tyson's comments on gender identity all right And let me know what you all think in the chat. If anything, Martina Navratilova recently slammed famous astrophysicist Neil deGrasse Tyson for, for his take on gender identity. The American legend who won 59 major titles in singles, doubles, and mixed doubles was reacting to Tyson's TikTok video on gender identity and fluidity that went viral last month. In said video, the 64-year-old elicited plenty of controversy with his opinions. Suppose, no matter my chromosomes, I feel 80%, this is a misprint, I think, 80% uh, female and 20% male. I'm going to put on makeup. I'm going to do this. Tomorrow, I might feel 80% male. So that, that, that's, a, that's a misprint. I'll remove the makeup and put on a muscle shirt, he said at the beginning of the video. The American astrophysicist's video has since been criticized by a large majority of social media users. Navratilova also joined them earlier on, on Monday, September 25th, going as far as to claim that Tyson was completely clueless while talking on the subject. Okay, I forced myself to watch this whole thing, and all I can say is Neil Tyson is completely clueless while trying to sound knowledgeable and reasonable, she wrote while reposting another social media user's rebuttal of the astrophysicist. There's a picture of uh, Navratilova right there with her, I think with probably her wife. 
Uh, Martina Navratilova is a staunch critic of transgender athletes competing in women's sports. Yep, that's with that's with her her wife. And there's Neil. Uh, Martina Navratilova never misses a beat when it comes to critiquing transgender activism on social media these days, leading many fans to question her status as a ally, an LGBT ally. Last week, she openly mocked a trans identifying man winning a five thousand a five k race in Ottawa, Canada. What an other what an utter joke! She wrote disapprovingly. Martina Navratilova has had also expressed discontent with trans identifying powerlifter Avi Silverberg being allowed to break the women's bench press record in the 84 plus kilograms category at a national tournament in the USA last month. It's happening literally everywhere the American posted on social media. Martina Navratilova's comments on transgender athletes, in fact, uh, have been so rampant over the years that the LGBT plus group named uh, athlete Ali even cut ties with her in 2019. Their decision to not associate with the American came after she appeared as a guest columnist in an English daily and wrote to put the argument at its most basic, a man can decide to be female, take hormones if required by whatever sporting organization is concerned, win everything in sight, and perhaps earn a small fortune and then reverse his decision and go back to making babies if he so desires. It's insane and it's cheating. These comments didn't sit well with the LGBT plus athletic advocacy organization who not only dropped her as their global ambassador, but also publicly condemned her in their statement. Navratilova's recent comments are transphobic based on false data and perpetuate dangerous myths that lead to the ongoing targeting of trans people. She has been removed from our advisory board and as an athlete ally ambassador effective immediately an excerpt from their statement read. Okay. So that's the end of that. So it's fascinating because it gets back to the central question of how do you differentiate those, well, not those, how do you differentiate how do you differentiate our genders today? What designates what a man is, what designates what a woman is? And is it even fair? Is it fair for a transitioned man to compete in sports with natural, uh, naturally born women. Is that fair? Is that just? Does that make sense? This piece here, I'm not going to read this verbatim, but this uh, gives an in-depth discussion of uh, what Neil deGrasse Tyson, of what Dr. Neil deGrasse Tyson uh, said in terms of his position. Uh, I have not openly criticized Dr. Tyson. Shoot, I'd like to meet him one day. I mean, because of his accomplishments in the uh, astronomy world, I don't know about his uh, his acumen in the biological sciences, but um, at one point I aspired to meet him. So I haven't really disparaged him, but this piece uh, gets to what he said. I'm going to read just one paragraph and I'm almost done. There's a picture of um, the University of Pennsylvania swimmer Leah Thomas and Kentucky swimmer Riley Gaines uh, tied for fifth in the 200 freestyle finals at the NCAA Swimming and Diving Championships in March, eight, on March 18th, 2022. Okay. So he, so that person is visibly larger and more robust than uh, the woman with her, her hand up. There's something Neil said here that's interesting. Uh, 
This is Neil talking. And this whole article is, is below if you want to read the whole thing. It's, he says, we're in a transitional period, so we have to figure that out. But the way to figure out things that require solutions to progressive change is not to regress it to how things once were. If that were the case, I would still be drinking from a segregated water fountain, Tyson responded. So there you see Tyson conflate, well, looking to attach this thing with civil rights. Okay, let me read that again. We're in a transitional period, so we have to figure that out. But the way to figure it, to figure out things that require solutions to progressive change is not to regress it to how things once were. If that were the case, I would still be drinking from a segregated water fountain. Okay. I just thought that was, that's interesting that Dr. Tyson would try to link the two uh, civil rights to these, this type of thing. Kareem, uh, thank you uh, for stopping through. This is probably not anything you haven't heard before. I'm, I'm talking about how science is being intermingled with uh, culture and political issues and this this one in particular. So I'm going to wrap this up. Uh, I'm at about 45 minutes. So the transitioning, what exactly is the transitioning? So we learned about the Y chromosome. There's a, a specific gene, the SYR gene on the Y chromosome. The SYR gene. And that leads to men becoming boys becoming boys and eventually men from a uh, molecular biological perspective. That SYR gene on the Y chromosome. And that Y chromosome comes from the father. Okay. So once nature, once nature establishes the genders, how do you switch them? How do you change them? Well, we're going to go back to endocrinology. Endocrinology. We've talked about numerous aspects of endocrinology. So when you think about when you think about endocrinology, we're talking about hormones and we're talking about endocrine signaling. So when you're talking about endocrinology, you have one set of cells in the body creating a hormone. That hormone typically um, gets deposited or diffuses into the into the, the circulatory system. And then it travels to another tissue in the body and it affects that tissue, the cells in that tissue, and it causes those cells to start creating or doing something. Okay. An example, I've talked about this in previous content, is the androgen receptor. Okay. So in this instance, you have the hypothalamus that generates luteinizing hormone, releasing hormone. Uh, that causes the anterior pituitary to secrete luteinizing hormone. The luteinizing hormone uh, goes to the testes, and that causes the testes to generate testosterone. Okay. And that testosterone does any number of things within the body. That is an example of uh, endocrine signaling, okay? And when we're talking about this whole transitioning thing, when you're seeing, I need to be careful talking about this here. When you're seeing individuals who have quote unquote transitioned competing with natural born um, women, females, that's what we're talking about. We're talking we're talking about endocrinology. We're talking about endocrinology. We're talking about endocrine systems being 
being pharmaceutically uh, altered. That's what we're talking about. So there's there are hormonal therapies to cause this transitioning. And then there are um, surgeries, which are a little more permanent. Let me read Walaya R's comment. Uh, Walaya R, thank you. I don't know, you know, it's, it's a small crowd. I don't know who's getting anything from this. I appreciate this. So let, let's see if I can uh, give you guys a strong finish. So endocrinology. So you're talking, so when you're talking about hormonal treatments, you're talking about endocrinology. And this is similar, I think, when women go through menopause, uh, they take exogenous estrogen as well. So speaking of estrogen and testosterone, what are estrogen and testosterone? So estrogen and testosterone. So testosterone, women do women's bodies do generate some, but not to the degree that men's bodies do. This is the structure for testosterone, right? Uh, it is, this is all generated from cholesterol. This is the structure for estrogen, okay? This is generated from cholesterol as well. So we take in cholesterol, we can take in cholesterol through our diets if we eat meat and dairy, but our bodies also make cholesterol because cholesterol is the starting material for our sex hormones, right? Hey, can you all tell the difference? Can you all tell the difference between testosterone and estrogen? I should have put these on the same slide. It's not fair for me to put these up separately and ask you all to uh, differentiate between the two but there's a subtle difference. The ring structures are the same, but there are subtle differences between the two molecules. I will cut to the chase and tell you what it is. This testosterone molecule, if you look at the lower edge there, that's called a, um, a ketone. I'm talking some organic chemistry here. So, there's a ketone there and there's a double bond in that lower ring. That's testosterone. When you look at the estrogen here, there's a hydroxyl group on that lower ring and you have three double bonds in that lower ring. So similar ring structures, but their identities are completely different in terms of function. And this slide right here shows um the the creation of uh the generation of testosterone and estrogen starting with uh, DHEA which I discussed in an earlier stream which is a supplement a lot of um older women are using to try to become pregnant so similar molecules they're on a a, a connected metabolic pathway and one helps designate male uh, sexuality and the other one helps designate female sexuality and the functions associated with each. Walaya R says, let's see. Have you discussed Professor Tyrone Hayes and his work on the chemical atrazine and its effect on animals? Okay, so now you're talking about um, that's a pesticide. And Based upon my current nine to five, I cannot talk about atrazine here right now. So I will look his work up. If my status for my nine to five changes at some point, I'll talk about that more. But based upon my current station in life, in terms of what pays the bills here, I'd better not talk about atrazine here on this platform. Uh, endocrine disruptor is okay. He says... The chemical industry and corporate media suppressed Professor Hayes' research on atrazine heavy. I Okay, thank you for letting me know. I don't doubt it. Okay, so endocrine, endocrine signaling, endocrinology, hormone, um, hormone treatment. So this link is also in the description box. I'm going to read the first paragraph, and then, then I'm going to jump through it. There's one for males, and there's one for females. So let's start with. 
masculinizing hormone therapy. All right. So again, everyone, all we're talking about here, all we're talking about is endocrinology. We're manipulating the endocrine systems of men and women. Okay, so I'll read this overview. Masculinizing hormone therapy typically is used by transgender men and non-binary people to produce physical changes in the body that are caused by male hormones during puberty. Those changes are called secondary sex characteristics. This hormone therapy helps better align the body with a person's gender identity. Masculinizing hormone therapy also is called gender affirming hormone therapy. YouTube, this is for educational purposes only. This is for educational purposes only. We're not telling people what to think. We're not telling people what to do. Masculinizing hormone therapy involves taking the male hormone testosterone. It stops. It stops menstrual cycles and decreases the ovaries ability to make estrogen. Masculinizing hormone therapy can be done alone or along with masculinizing surgery. Not everybody chooses to have masculinizing hormone therapy. It can affect fertility and sexual function, and it might lead to health problems. Talk with your healthcare provider about the risks and benefits for you. This is off of the, the Mayo Clinic site. I'm going to skip down. Let's see. So why it's done. Masculinizing hormone therapy is used to change the body's hormone levels. Those hormone changes trigger physical changes that help better align the body with a person's gender identity. In some cases, in some cases, people seeking masculinizing hormone therapy experience discomfort or distress because their gender identity differs from their sex assigned at birth or from their sex-related physical characteristics. This condition is called gender dysphoria. Masculinizing hormone therapy can improve psychological and social well-being, ease psychological and emotional distress related to gender, improve satisfaction with sex, improve quality of life. Your healthcare provider might advise against masculinizing hormone therapy if you are pregnant, have a uh, hormone-sensitive cancer, such as breast cancer, have problems with blood clots, such as when blood clot uh, forms, when a blood clot forms in the deep vein, a deep vein, a condition called deep vein thrombosis, or there's a blockage in one of the pulmonary arteries of the lungs called a pulmonary embolism. Uh, if you have significant medical conditions that haven't been addressed, if you have behavioral health conditions that haven't been addressed, uh, have a condition that limits your ability to give your informed consent. I'm going to read one more thing here. So these are the risks. Research has found that masculinizing hormone therapy can be safe and effective when delivered by a healthcare provider with expertise in transgender care. Talk to your healthcare provider about questions or concerns uh, you have regarding the changes that will help in your uh, body as a result of masculinizing hormone therapy. By the way, if anyone wants to make a donation to the channel, my Cash App and PayPal are here. I think I made that announcement before uh, the, well, the crowd that I have came in. This goes if, if you're watching on the playback as well. Okay. These are the side effects and the risks. Uh, complications include weight gain, acne, developing male pattern baldness, sleep apnea, a rising cholesterol, which may increase the risk of heart problems, high blood pressure, making too many red blood cells, a condition called polycythemia, uh, type 2 diabetes, blood clots in a deep vein or in the lungs, infertility, drying and thinning of the lining of the vagina, pelvic pain, and discomfort in the, I'm sorry, discomfort in the clitoris. All right, I'm going to stop that here and just read a few points from the, the feminizing side. And then I'm going to wrap this up because I'm doing something in another hour on another channel.
So this is going to be similar. Again, we're just, we're talking about hormones. We're talking about changing which hormones are in circulation and how those hormones impact uh, bodily, uh, bodily functions. So feminizing hormone therapy, okay? Feminizing hormone therapy typically is used by transgender women and non-binary people to produce physical changes in the body that are caused by female hormones during puberty. Those changes are called secondary sex characteristics. This hormone, this hormone therapy helps better align the body with a person's gender identity. Feminizing hormone therapy also is called gender affirming, gender affirming hormone therapy. Feminizing hormone therapy involves taking medicine to block the action of the hormone testosterone. It also includes taking the hormone estrogen. Estrogen lowers the amount of testosterone the body makes. It also triggers the development of feminine secondary sex characteristics. Feminizing hormone therapy can be done alone or along with feminizing surgery. I'm not going to say what that involves. I think you all know what that is. Not everybody chooses to have feminizing hormone therapy. It can affect fertility and sexual function, and it might lead to health problems. Talk with your healthcare provider about the risks and benefits to you. Okay, why it's done, that's similar to the male side. Uh, let's see. I think these risks, okay, risks, because some of these are different than the male side. Complications include blood clots in deep vein or in the lungs, heart problems, high levels of triglycerides, a a type of fat in the blood, high levels of potassium in the blood, high levels of the hormone prolactin in the blood, all right, nipple discharge, weight gain, infertility, high blood pressure, type 2 diabetes, and stroke. And I'll stop this here because these links are in the description box below and you all can read about this if you want to. And I'll probably, as per usual, once the stream is over, my wheels will start turning and I'll probably think of follow-ups to this. But I think I'll stop this here. It's uh, Country Girl Queena says, she says, salute to Big Discussion 76. Maz in the chat, thank you for stopping through. Uh, Queena, I know you from uh, Sheeds Network. So everyone, that's that's the discussion on uh, another uh, follow-up discussion on endocrinology uh, and hormone therapies for gender transitionings. It is a, a controversial topic. And based upon the article I read about uh, Martina Navratilova, it's interesting that there's even disagreement within that community about this and about who should be doing what and about who should compete in what and who should have access to certain things. So should transitioned men be allowed to compete with natural uh, born women? You know, should those individuals be going into the same bathrooms or should they have their own separate leagues and sports and and bathrooms? It's a very, very interesting and um, complicated area. And it's interesting because Going to the political side, I'm going to wrap this up. Many, I think most of my subs here are black. Many, many black people. Well, it used to be. I know that my mom is is very church going and she's very devout. When you vote for certain sides, you're empowering certain things. So I know that for individuals in my mother's demographic, one of the big things was is always vote Democrat. In the, in the last election, it was get Trump out. But my mother's very, very devout Christian. But her voting inclinations help to strengthen and empower things like this. 
Okay. And that was the same thing with uh, the Obama. Jeez, should I say this? Well, one of the things people are looking back and seeing now is that uh, the Obama presidency in, in, in the administration did a lot of things for this particular community, right? And so while Black people are traditionally, well, they were socially conservative and church going, their um, political inclinations probably inadvertently supported and empowered things like this. So science overlapping and co-mingling with politics and culture. All right. Um, I'm going to read this, this from Will Iyer says, wow, I'm not sure what that was referring to. And he says, all those side effects just to become something different than what you was born as amazing. So, so Will I R. So I'm going to say this with some sympathy for those individuals, because one of the questions that comes up is your gender identity. Is it nature or is it nurture? Were you, are you born who you are or are you nurtured into who you are? Okay. Nur and nurturing can be being abused, sexually abused as a child. Nurturing could be being encouraged to do, to explore these things by the school system, which we're seeing a lot of now that's nurture. And then nature is, well, you know, I, I know that I'm a man, I'm, attra I'm attracted to women, but what about people? What about those individuals that grew up in loving and quote unquote normal families who still felt that inclination that they weren't in the right body. So it's a little tricky. It's a little tricky. It's, 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 it's not a black and white area. I'm going to admit that as a scientist, I'm going to admit that it's not a, a black and white area, but certainly from a genetic standpoint, nature, based upon what we know, nature designates genetically what a man and a woman are. And then, you know what, that gets to another, that gets to another question. And this will be fun to, to ask Justice Jackson and Corey Bush and Mark Lamont Hill. Even if um, you change your appearance on the outside, genetically, if you have that Y chromosome, are you still a man? That, that That's a very interesting question. Even if you change your appearance on the outside and you have two X chromosomes, aren't you still technically a woman. Okay. I may be getting myself in trouble with those questions. YouTube, this is for educational purposes only, but this is a science and technology channel. These are uh, things that we're all facing and dealing with now as a society. And uh, this is what we're, this is what's going on now. So, uh, so I'm going to end with that question. Doctor, why is Doctor Dunbar making videos on uh, hormones for gender transitionings? Why is Doctor Dunbar making videos on freezing eggs? Why is Doctor Dunbar making videos on freezing sperm? Why is Doctor Dunbar making videos on biological clocks? Well, these are science and technology related topics, and science and technology related stories. And these are all around us, and these are unfolding around us every single day. And this is a science and a technology channel. So those topics fit under this umbrella. Knowledge for the sake of knowledge, science discussions for the sake of science discussions. Telling Stewart, thank you for stopping through. She says... I'm waiting for America to start talking about psychological dysphoria. FYI, psychological dysphoria is real. 
I'm not, I'm not, I'm familiar with gender dysphoria. I'm not familiar with psychological dysphoria. All right, everyone, I had better wrap up because I have something else to do. But thank you to everyone who hung out during this chat, this one uh, during this talk. Thank you to everyone who hung out in the chat during this talk. This one was dense with information, with with science concepts, with biology and, and some genetics and uh, endocrinology and reproductive biology. And this one was dense. So I think there's always a danger in losing people when it gets too dense, but there's a lot. There's a lot here when you, when you hear Mark Lamont Hill and Justice Jackson and Corey Bush and you hear all these people all these people talking. You need to know what they're talking about and you need to understand on a from a, um, a three dimensional perspective what they're talking about and why it's important. I believe in that. And not and not just take what they say as the gospel. Right. Uh, let's see. Well, IRR says boomers in my family be aggressively Democrats to an extreme fault as well. I challenge them on it constantly. Uh, he says, for some reason, the black boomers have a mental disconnect when it comes to voting for a political party and the real time on the ground consequences of that party vote. Yeah. The will IRR, I mean, when you're looking constantly at race, and um, when that's your primary focus, you, you kind of don't see everything else. And when you look at the world in terms of white people, black people, and that's it without any other thoughts or focuses, yeah, you're going to vote that way. Uh, Kareem, uh, you're welcome. Uh, let's see. Queen says, I'll catch the beginning. Kareem, we're actually, me and my brother, we're actually about to do a stream. <clears throat> on my entertainment and media channel on uh, a soldier story. So we were going to start at 11, but since I'm finishing this one late, we'll probably start a little bit after 11 if you're not doing anything because you're into movies and in cinema and media. Well, IR says, uh, and many of them have college degrees, so it's not like they can't read the policies of these political parties for themselves. I don't get it. Well, well IR, this will probably be the last thing I say. Just getting a college degree does not mean a person is intellectually curious, okay? Just getting a college degree does not mean that a person is a lifelong learner. And just getting a college degree does not mean that a person can think critically and three-dimensionally. And many universities now, as we're seeing, are uh, centers for social programming. So they're programming people in there to think and perceive the world a certain way. And they're not encouraging critical thought. They're indoctrinating people. So, all right, everyone. This is Big Discussions 76, Science and Technology. My name is Dr. Anwar Youssef Dunbar. Uh, please like, share, and subscribe if you're new. Please, well, if you're a returning subscriber, please like and share if you want to donate something to the channel that information is below in the description box my cash app and paypal are here if you subscribed before you may be unsubscribed youtube is treating this channel kind of weird i don't know why uh please consider joining the uh, big words llc newsletter In addition to being a YouTube content creator, I am also a writer uh, with uh, two blogs and a book project on the way. The link is there in the chat for the newsletter. This is it. There's a two paragraph greeting. There's a two paragraph greeting. And you just click that subscribe button 
and you enter in your email address there and you'll be a part of the uh, the group. So please consider signing up and joining. Gigami, thank you for stopping through. I am uh, about to wrap this up. I I've been talking for an hour and 15 minutes. So thank you for stopping through. Uh, the, the playback will be there. And you know what? Before I give my salutation, let's end this once again with uh, Marsha Blackburn, Senator Marsha Blackburn, and Supreme Court Justice uh, Katanji Brown-Jackson, because they framed this discussion very, very well. A lot of people were upset because uh, Senator uh, Blackburn asked Justice Jackson that. They thought it was a racial thing and a, and a, a, a gotcha. But when you think about things in their totality, and when you think about things logically, this is a very, very important question. And the answer is a bit of a head scratcher. I know a lot of people are going to hate me for saying that. A lot of people are going to want to are going to want to tar and feather me for saying this, but it just is what it is. Can you provide a definition for the word woman? Can I provide a definition? Mm -hmm. no. Yeah. I can't. You can't? N not in okay. this context. So I'm not a biologist. Of the I'm not a biologist. That's why we need scientists. We need real scientists, real trained scientists. When I made this drop last night, I was sitting, I was sitting here laughing because this is, well, last night it was tickling me. Can I provide a definition? Mm -hmm. no. Yeah. I can't. You can't? N not in okay. this context. So I'm not a biologist. The All right, everyone, enjoy the rest of your Saturday. As always, remember that your attitude determines your altitude. Always try to do your best. Take care, and I will talk to you the next time. Telling Stewart says, I am a uh, natural, organic, genetically, biologically menstruating woman. <laughs> and you know what? On that note, Telling Stewart, I want to applaud the women like you and Martina Navratilova and other women who are stepping up and asking questions about this thing and saying, you know what, this isn't, yeah, there's, there's something kind of janky about this. Some of this isn't right, or maybe all of this isn't right. I want to applaud them, you all, for stepping up and speaking out against this because when you speak up and talk against wherever the machine is going, the make this matrix we're living in, you get demonized and you get tired and feathered. And uh, yeah. So thank you for saying that telling Stuart. All right, everyone, I'm out of here. I'll talk to you next time. Um, I will be on travel next week. So if I don't do a live, I will, um, well, maybe I'll, I'll do a live from where I am because I'll be at a, a science writers conference and that's the direction. Well, that's a science writing slash science communication conference. And that's where I'm looking to go with this channel, but also uh, professionally. So maybe I'll do something for my hotel room to talk to you all about the conference. And if not, maybe I will try to uh, get a pre-record up either before I go or so that it'll run while I'm gone. All right, enjoy the rest of your weekend. I'll talk to you later. And thank you again for the continued support. Bye-bye.